welcome everybody. Um, I'm not going to lead a room by room tour, uh, but more a uh, spot stop along the uh, way of Gorky. But as uh, Vicente has said, this is a, a, a big exhibition. It deals with the whole of his career, really, from the mid 20s until his death in 1948. And it tries to look again at the early period where uh, he's tended to be seen simply as being an apprentice to other artists, and then see how that develops through his work uh, and into the, the breakthrough years of the 1940s. I said at the beginning that we had made a deliberate set of choices about how the spaces might convey something about Gorky's own uh, development and how you have a more labyrinthine beginning and this opening out. And the passageway gallery, um, gallery 8, is this moment of um, sudden engagement with the landscape. He has the opportunity uh, to um, go across America in 1941. He had a, an exhibition at the San Francisco Museum of Art uh, and travelled across country uh, and back again by car. And then in early 42, he uh, has the opportunity to go and stay in um, Connecticut. And this is a, a, a sort of immersion in the landscape that seems to be uh, a, a, like a complete liberation. And he starts just pouring out drawings. Those are very, very fine uh, but limited selection of the drawings that he produces in Connecticut and in Virginia. Uh, and these infuse the sorts of works that he makes from 1942 onwards. Um, the works in this room are the ones that really cemented Gorky's reputation. One of the sort of layers of tragedy about uh, Gorky's, the end of Gorky's life, is how he really had just made it. He, he was being acknowledged uh, by critics like Clement Greenberg, who was really the power in the critical apparatus in America at that moment. He was uh, selling works to museums. He was, uh, he had a dealer encouraged by the um, leader of the Surrealists, Andre Breton, who was in exile in, in New York, who really adopted Gorky and promoted his work, wrote a beautiful, um, if rather difficult, piece about Gorky called The Mind Spring for Julian Levy's first show of, of Gorky's work. So all of these things seemed to be building together. There was, Breton was saying, well, you know, you are the last great Surrealist artist. I think the, if there is an upbeat side to it, it is these works and the impact that they leave, the sense that here there's a great power in the way they're made, in their extraordinary colouring, in the energy in which they're made, and in what that generated for those who lived alongside him in New York and took it further, Pollock, de Kooning, Rothko, uh, Baziotis. Uh, David Smith, all who knew him and took that with them into their own work and into the, uh, as it were, the conception of abstract expressions. 